they're uh, they've got six megawatt turbines now, so yeah. a single one, you know. Yeah. So they're more or less up to their ninety percent efficiency. Yeah, or about. Well, it's sort of return per pound rather than efficiency, because when the fuel is free, it doesn't really matter what the efficiency is. It's how effective it is. And can you actually put a small amount of charge through and generate more electricity with it going back to a coil and magneto? Uh, if you put a small amount, just, just yeah. turn it gently, and the charge generated by the momentum, you know, of getting the like now, say now, it's yeah. turning very slowly. Sure. Regularly. So yeah. It's hard to any wind at all. There's nothing, is there? No. So, is there a, if, to get them started? Yes. Sometimes they do yeah. just give it a nudge to unstall the blades. Yeah. But these don't because the blades are on pivot so they can angle the blade to offer more airflow even when it's stationary. They can turn it around and pick the airflow up. Yeah. And then they feather out as they pick up speed. Yeah. Yep, the, uh, certainly older ones with fixed blades, rigid blades were given a nudge but it wasn't a lot but enough to boil a kettle. Really interesting. Can you get all the books in libraries and stuff? To, uh, on the oh, yeah, heaps. There's heaps yeah. of stuff out there on uh, the new building. Huh? Yeah, I wasn't there. Or would you recommend any book in particular? Don't mind reading Ah, I know exactly where you need to go. It's Wind Power Workshop by a guy called Hugh Piggott. Right. That's the one you need. Okay. Uh, Wind Power Workshop. Right, Hugh Piggott lives on the Isle of Saurag, is it? In. So he's a. Right, lives entirely on wind power. Yeah, yeah. There's um, up in the north of two wind turbines near where my family are, and um, they're about 16 foot high. Yeah. They seem quite squat and well built, so you know, I've never been close to them, but they're yeah. quite efficient. So, it's a bit boring in mind. Right. But these go down into that shed and it's collated and it puts this through a box, a glazed box. I don't really direct it goes it goes first to a transformer in the base of the tower yeah. then to basically a two electricity meters in that box yeah down there yeah and it's, it's a switch room and then it's onto the local grid which is is it, go, is it an underground yeah cable? underground cable yeah in the corner of the field and did did pot obviously sort of regulate the current going into the grid did they regulate yeah, uh, when it's running, Didcot regulates current. Fake and see Didcot running now. That yeah. cloud on the horizon yeah. is Didcot. Yeah. Yep, they, uh, again, newer turbines are better at regulating their own current. But the most earlier designs relied on the national grid for frequency and the turbines would synchronise to it. Right. 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 So, who does Didcot really burn different fuels on? Yeah, it does. Yeah, uh, mainly coal. Didcot B, the smaller station, burns uh, gas yeah. only. The big station burns coal predominantly, can burn oil, can burn gas, sometimes does. And, and will, uh, and yeah, they grind it up and they put it in with the coal. So uh, they get away with it that way. It wasn't designed to burn willow, but it burns well enough, okay. So. I think Drax does that as well. Yeah, yeah. Drax is quite heavily into willow now. Bit of, um, 